What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about two trades that I made today on the 23rd of January in 2019 and we're also quickly going to look at some other ticker symbols, some other stocks ETFs that performed well today. So before we do get into this, feel free to smash that like button if you guys do enjoy the content. It really does help my channel grow, and I really do appreciate it if you guys do smash that like button. So let's get started with today's video, guys. So at the close of the market, we ended up closing the day green today, but this doesn't tell the entire story because... We were red, honestly, for half of the day in terms of the SPX and the NASDAQ. The Dow Jones did a little bit better than the other two indices today because Procter & Gamble and IBM did absolutely fantastic, and those are two holdings in the Dow 30. So let's just quickly take a look at them just so I can show you guys you know, why the Dow didn't do as bad. It actually did very well compared to the SPX and the NASDAQ. We can see IBM was up 9% today right and Procter and Gamble was up five percent but I think it was up even further at one point ninety six dollars at that point it was probably up like six percent so let's take a look very quickly at the SPX and we can understand you know see some trends and see some charts to see what ended up happening today and what trend I think is going to you know play out for the next couple of weeks so we can see yesterday guys we got rejected we had that hard red day if you didn't see that go watch yesterday's video we got rejected at that 180 simple moving average which was a resistance over the past couple of months since we had that big sell-off starting back on the 3rd of October we can see we had trouble getting above it here 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 that was three tops right three uh rejections you know right at that 180 SMA we obviously have that huge tank in December and now we've been running up ever since December 26th and we got rejected yesterday and we had obviously you know another rejection today because we did not get above that 180 SMA so if we're taking a look at a little bit of a closer chart here on the uh, 20 day one hour we can see it's a little bit um it's like a descending pattern that's slowly starting to form here then and by that i mean we're seeing the top at 2675 and a lower high from the previous at around 2650 and this could potentially be guys depending on if we break below the 50 SMA tomorrow, this could end up being the third top or, you know, the third uh, uh, top, right? Which would make it a another lower high, right? And if that continues, guys, we're going to break the 50 SMA, which has been a support on the SPX on the 20-day, one-hour chart. So keep an eye on that tomorrow, guys. If we make that third lower high from the previous two lower highs, you know, that's going to push us below the 50 SMA, and that's a break of pattern, meaning that we could be heading down from there in terms of the SPX. And of course, guys, if we break the 180 SMA, SMA, which is around like 100 points uh, lower from where we are right now, that's going to be an even bigger sign that, that there's more selling to come, you know, in the SPX. So overall, guys, not too crazy of movement at the end of the day, only up $5, up 0.2%. And the trend, you know, that it got rejected by the uh, 180 SMA and we're heading down is still intact, guys. So just keep an eye on that level that I just showed you guys. Very, very important level. So quickly, the Dow Jones, like I said, it had one of the better days today out of the three indices because Procter & Gamble and IBM did absolutely great on their earnings reports and their stocks went up, right? We saw a 5% increase and an 8% increase in those two stocks. And one of the main differences I wanted to point out in terms of the Dow Jones, if we look on the 20 day, one hour chart, unlike the SPX guys, we bounced on the 50 SMA and we're continuing an uptrending pattern here on the Dow Jones. If we take a look back at the SPX very quickly, we notice on the 20 day, one hour chart, we're seeing that lower high action starting to form. You know, that's the exact opposite of what we're seeing here. We bounced here and now we're pushing for the higher high. But again, guys, 
Let's say tomorrow we start to sell off. This could be the start of that lower high, um, you know, sell off action for the Dow. If we start to head off, you know, if we start to sell off at this point, right? You guys understand what I'm saying? If we sell off here and let's say we bounce here again, sell off again, that's going to be the start of a sell off pattern. And typically that's how it ends up happening when we do find the top, right? I'm not saying this is 100% the top, but if that did happen, you know, that could be a good indication that this is the top. So, you know, Dow Jones, guys up 170 points today up 0.7 percent the uptrend is still continuing on this 20-day chart keep an eye for the break below the 50 SMA tomorrow and in terms of the 180 guys we're still technically under that resistance under the 180 SMA so all signs are looking good as of now for the continuation of the downtrend but just keep an eye on the smaller term charts you know that'll give you guys a better picture of you know the closer time frames of what's happening you know within the week and the weeks prior uh, to where we're trading right now. So the NASDAQ very quickly, guys, um, you know, we're selling off, holding that support at around 6,600 right now. I believe we did hold above it today around 6630 rather not 6600 and um you know this one is showing a sign of a rejection at the top of this channel which we were talking about in the previous couple of videos and at this resistance at around 6850 so guys keep an eye on this this could end up selling off to the next support and if it does guys around 6500 watch for the break of that and if it ends up breaking that it's also putting it below the 180 SMA which is a huge you know reversal trend to the downside for the NASDAQ. So in terms of the NASDAQ, that's what I'm looking at on the 180 chart on this 20-day uh, chart, very similar to the SPX, right? We're seeing a high at 6,800, a lower high formed, and another lower high. So we're seeing a descending pattern starting to form, but what we want to see for it to continue is, again, that break below 6,600 and eventually that break below 6,500. So keep an eye on those levels, guys for the NASDAQ composite. So let's talk about what I traded today. I took a red uh, trade on Tesla. You guys saw in yesterday's video, I took a position in Tesla at around 398, I believe 398.80 is when I bought, I believe five shares of Tesla. Took a smaller position because with my swing trades, when I have a goal to swing trade, you know, I typically like to scale in and then add more money as the stock continues the uptrend. Well, in this case, guys, it actually went complete opposite of where, you know, I wanted it to go, which in this case, it went down. We saw a big red day today in Tesla. We saw it hit $281, guys. And if you recall, in yesterday's video, I believe I was talking about how I didn't want to let Tesla get below 295 and that was kind of foolish of me because um you know it got to 280 right so that completely um you know that completely blew uh you know under my stop loss which was at 295 and I'll show you guys why I believe we yeah exactly right we can see here we closed at 298 it was kind of a risk guys because I didn't want to let it get under 295 but we closed at 298 so that only gave me like a three dollar buffer i should have honestly left a little bit more room um to buffer for tesla in terms of my stop loss maybe put it at 290 but i wanted to keep it tight and the fact that we didn't end up uh opening there you know it didn't hit my stop loss obviously and then i had to just sell off my shares you know i even canceled the stop loss honestly because at that point i saw we were trending down and I don't really trade uh, pre-market hours, to be completely honest with you guys. So I ended up just cutting my losses, you know, once the market opened. And then, you know, we tanked down even further to 281. So all in all, guys, not too crazy of a loss. And this is actually opening up something that I wanted to talk about really quickly here, which was a long-term uh, potential investment in Tesla. So I took around a 2-3% loss. Nothing crazy on that. I was with about 10-15% of my goal position. I only had about 5 shares, you know, in Tesla on the swing trade. But back to what I was saying, I kind of want to take a long-term position in Tesla around 250-260. I've been saying this over the past couple of months. If you guys are in the chat, you know I talk about this a lot. And that's going to put it, you know, really close to where we are right now, right? My 250-260 target is pretty close to where we are. We're at 287. And if more sell starts to kick in if we do get to 270 and if we do have a bad earnings report in Tesla which is next 
Wednesday, I believe. It's next Wednesday. We do have an earnings report for Tesla. If that ends up pushing the stock down, right, I think this could push it down to 250 260 if we have a bad earnings report. And I'm looking to actually buy a couple shares in Tesla at around 260 250 maybe even low 270s right you know as one of my speculative investments not putting anything more than five percent into that investment in my long-term portfolio because honestly i like the product of tesla i do believe in elon musk specifically and i think tesla is just a great idea they're ahead of the game by far and you know i think there's a lot of potential with this company and you know might as well just risk five percent on a spec stock, I'm a young dude. Honestly, when you're young, you can take more risks, and I don't see any problem, you know, buying into Tesla. If I'm being, you know, uh, you know, what's it called? Uh, what's it called, guys? Disciplined and not putting more than five percent in there. So that's what I did in terms of Tesla, guys. Took a little bit of a loss, but not really too discouraging because I do want to add a long position if it does continue to go down. And what I traded today, guys, was TVIX, and we can see. Ever since the market was selling off like crazy in the beginning of the day, like I said, when the SPX was selling off for the first half of the day, TVIX had a ridiculous run. Yet again, 13% run. If we recall, yesterday it had a 17% run. And we pretty much got, I personally got, again, a 3% profit on TVIX. So I got in once I confirmed the downtrend on the SPX because the SPX is what TVIX follows. And by that, if you guys remembered what I said in yesterday's video, go back to yesterday's video. I don't remember where I said this, but I said this in yesterday's video that typically when we sell off heavily to the end of the market, we end up bouncing back up, gapping back up, in the beginning of the day, which is exactly what ended up happening, and then we start to sell off from there. And this is why I don't hold TVIX overnight, because this is what typically does happen when we do sell off in the market. So it played out perfectly, guys. You know, it, it popped up to 26.50 and that actually gapped down TVIX opening up more margin of profit and then we started to sell off again guys and then we started to sell off again and notice over these two charts on the SPX we made a lower low from the previous day so this is a good sign that this could potentially happen tomorrow again we pop up and then we continue to sell off and continue to push to lower lows from the previous two days, right? I hope you guys understand what I'm saying here. But anyway, guys, we ended up downtrending here, and that's when I ended up profiting about 3% on TVIX. And very simple, we see, you know, at 10.01, we found the top, and I waited to see if we were going to get rejected by the 50 SMA, if we were going to pop back above it, and we got rejected here, guys, continued to push down, and this is when I started to add into my position. And then once we broke below the 180 SMA, added a little bit more into TVIX and ended up just grabbing a 3% profit. And if we go back on TVIX, very simple guys, around 1030, added a little bit of money, right? I believe right around here, ended up adding more on the dip. And then I was out about 3% up from there. Very, very simple guys. That is what I did in terms of my trading today on TVIX. So if you guys found value in that information, feel free to smash that like button. If you are enjoying the content, and you're not subscribed yet, Subscribe to the channel, guys. I'm posting daily updates here on my trading, on the market, what stocks are reporting earnings, all that crazy stuff, you know, all the stuff that we love to do on a day-to-day -day basis with the stock market. I'm talking about it here on this channel. So that's what I did, guys. Took a little loss. Um, you know, got back that loss and a little bit more. So overall today, guys, not too great of a day. But again, you know, any green day that I can take, profit is profit. You know, I'm happy with that, right? I'm sure a lot of you guys experience the same thing. And let me just talk about some stocks very quickly, guys. I don't want to keep this for more than two, three minutes because I do want to start shortening the videos a little bit more. I've been getting some DMs on Instagram that some of them are a little bit too long, um, you know, I don't think they're that long. I've seen other stock YouTubers do like an hour long video. I don't want to do that long of a video, but I do want to keep it in, you know, the 15 to 20 minute range. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. What's the ideal time that you guys would like to see these videos? I know sometimes they get closer to 30 minutes because I typically ramble like I am right now, but you know, that's just how I am guys. When I get excited about something, I can talk about it and literally 30 minutes go by and I'm like, holy 
crap, that was a long video. So that's just how it happens most of the time. But let's talk about what happened today with natural gas very quickly. We saw a pretty big dump today on natural gas. We saw you know, early on, this was about 12.08 p.m. from 3.09, it dumped all the way down to 2.95, opening up a huge gain in degas. We saw a big drop today in cron, guys. So a lot of people have been messaging me about put options on cron. I am still thinking about it. I want to see the break below the 50 SMA first. I want to see that confirmation. But as of now, things are looking solid that we got rejected right around that $15 range. We, we saw some consolidation there and we're pushing back down. Obviously, Tesla, like we saw that made a crazy move. In terms of the other two, Procter & Gamble, that one did very well today. You know, it, it consolidated, it popped up, it's right by the uh, resistance. So this could be a potential put option play here as well. If you guys do think this one's going to deflate a little bit, I personally think it could. I don't really see this one going back up. Do you guys see going back up to $100? Let's see when it was last at $100. It wasn't within the last year. Three years ago, yeah, man, honestly, this could be a good potential put play. Just keep an eye, you know, on that resistance for Procter & Gamble. J&J &J is another one that I'm actually looking at. This one's looking very good, guys. We've been consolidating on here. Um, you know, let's show a little bit of a closer chart. We've been consolidating at 130 after a good earnings report, we dumped, we've been consolidating, so this one could fill this gap. I talked about this one a little bit earlier in the video this morning, and I still think this is a solid trade. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. What are you trading? You know, what stocks are you watching? Any long-term investments? You know, any swing trades, day trades? What are you guys doing out there? Drop a comment. Let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Join that Discord if you want to talk to me and our team of 450 people. It's 100% free. That link is down below in the description as well. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for all the support. I'll see you guys soon.